Welcome back guys. So today we're going to be talking PC Engine and how to get the most out of this system. So this is the Japanese version of the TurboGrafx-16. In Japan, they did release multiple versions of this. This is the Core Graphics. There's also a Core Graphics 2. The original PC Engine is all white. The later versions, the Core Graphics and Core Graphics 2 incorporated an AV out port, whereas the original was only RF. So you would have to get that modded if you wanted to use AV or RGB. But the options we're gonna be looking at today, for the most part, can be used across the board between PC Engine versions and the TurboGrafx-16. I'll make note if something's not compatible. But what we wanna look at today is different video output options, different ways to play our games, flash carts, and a few different accessories that I would highly recommend if you're getting into the PC Engine. So prices on these things have kind of fluctuated over the years. I did get a Core Graphics a long while back, complete in a box for a reasonable price. The one thing to note is if you do go the route and get a PC engine, if it comes with the original power supply, I would highly recommend getting something that is compliant with our US power. So there's a difference between the power in the US and Japan with our, you know, our, our power sockets, our outlets, right? I'm not a scientist. I can't go into depth on that stuff, but I know with the difference there, if you use the original power supply from Japan on the system through a US outlet, uh, you can damage the system over time. Uh, there's like a voltage regulator in here. It'll get extremely hot, eventually damage the board. Some people have never had that happen. I have noticed over different versions of this that I've had, if I use the original Japanese power supply, this area right here gets extremely hot to the touch. Not something I want to risk. So you can use a compatible power supply like the uh, Sega Genesis 1602. I believe that's the original Model 1 uh, Genesis power supply. Or get like a third-party brand new power supply. I'll put links in the description for all this stuff. And the one thing I do want to note before we really jump into this is everything on my table here, I paid for it with my own money. Not a single item here was sent to me for purpose of review. But let's go ahead and dive right into it. So if you get one of these systems, comes with the original power supply, uh, if you get it complete in a box anyway, and comes with an AV cable. Now the AV cable, man, depending on how you wanna plug that in, might not look all that great. So some of these options here, are gonna give us better visuals. And that's that's one of the big things I wanna talk about today. But I also wanna talk about ways to play games because this system, the PC Engine, is region locked to you know Japanese only Hue cards. Same thing with the TurboGrafx-16. You can only play US games on it, not uh, Japanese games, unless you have your system region modded. But with these solutions here, you don't have to worry about that. So one of the first things that we can use to play games across the board is gonna be the Turbo EverDrive. The Turbo EverDrive is a flash cart for the PC Engine or Turbo Graphics 16. Fairly basic, but it gets the job done. You can only play Hue card games. No matter which system you use, you can play PC Engine or Turbo Graphics 16 games on both regions consoles, so that's a very nice thing. On the, the, the Turbo EverDrive, it does has, have a switch, uh, depending on the region of your system, PC Engine or Turbo Graphics 16 on the side. Um, on the front, we do have a little button that resets the console, goes back to the menu. That is really nice. Then a micro SD card slot. So with this, really cool stuff enables us to be able to play a bunch of games, load up your ROMs, has an, you know instant loading, four megabytes of RAM. You do have to format your SD card to FAT32. Turbo EverDrive typically goes for around $90. So that's one of the big things I wanna talk about here is price. What does all this stuff cost? Kind of give you guys a good idea. If you're in the market for any of this stuff, what would be the best option for you? What are the prices of all this stuff? Now, the next item, as far as options to play our games, is going to be the Super SD System 3 from Terra Onion. This thing right here is pretty damn amazing. So this connects to your PC engine console by means of the expansion port. It's also compatible with the Core Graphics, Core Graphics 2, Super Graphics and the North American Turbo Graphics 16. So the really cool thing with this is that you could play Hue card games off of it without having a Hue card in your PC Engine or Turbo Graphics. You can the biggest thing though, forget that noise. We could do that with the EverDrive. 
you could play CD-ROM games. That is huge. There are so many PC Engine uh, CD-ROM games that are expensive as hell. This thing allows you to play them on your system. So there's a few other things too that we're gonna talk about, but plugging this thing in, it plugs into your expansion slot on the back like that. And now the nice thing is you no longer have to use your AV out. You now have RGB. And with this comes a whole host of options. So that's the next thing we're gonna talk about. That's, that's an awesome thing because now we can use RGB, um, HD retrovision cables and a few other things that we're gonna talk about. Now, before we really dive into that, the one other option that we have is gonna be the uh, engine block AV or the uh, DB graphics booster. Uh, this also plugs into the back of your system. This doesn't give you any kind of gameplay action or anything like that. This is simply a solution to get different video output options. So if we take this off, uh, and you have to be real careful with these, especially this one, sliding it into the pins on the back, um, you really need to make sure you're good and get them in there sturdy. But once you have that plugged in, that's how she looks. Also works on the TurboGrafx-16. You now have some different video options here. So we have our composite, very nice because a lot of systems didn't have composite. So that's one solution there. Uh, the other thing is we have S-Video and then RGB. So that opens up a host of things just like the Super SD System 3. Now the Super SD System 3, I almost forgot to mention, is pretty damn pricey. But for what it does, it, it's, you know, for some it may be reasonable, but this thing is nearly $300. It's about 290 bucks right now. Uh, from the last time I checked on StoneAgeGamer.com. With the features you get, maybe it'll be worth it for you. But if you don't care about those CD games, maybe just go with the Engine Block AV and a Turbo EverDrive. The, en the Engine Block AV from uh, Stone Age Gamer, uh, depend on where you get them, uh, it'll be called the DB Graphics Booster. You're looking at between $70 to $80 just for this. And then you're also gonna need something to plug into the back, right? So that's where our next options come in. The one thing I've been ranting and raving about uh, for a moment now is the Rad 2X. This is the Genesis Model 2 Rad 2X. And this thing works magic in my opinion. So the Rad 2X is about a $50 device, allows us to plug our system straight into HDMI. No power required. This thing is using RetroTINK 2X technology. Uh, the formats that it takes is, is 240p, and it line doubles it. So has RGB internally converted to component, built-in anti-aliasing low-pass filter, uh, defaults to 4.3 aspect ratio, very low latency of about 53 microseconds. So that is definitely awesome. There's another option here, just like the uh, RetroTINK 2X where you can flip a switch and you get a smoothing effect. I don't really care for that. Um, but this thing, it, it is great. It will work with both the engine block AV or the DB graphics booster plugging it into the RGB slot. Just like that. And then you're ready to go to just plug this in. This does take mini HDMI. So you will need like an adapter like this to plug in standard size HDMI. Uh, that just goes into the slot right there. And then boom, you're ready to go. And the nice thing with the Rad 2X is that it's also gonna work on the Super SD System 3. So that will just plug right into the back as well. Just like so. So you've got some options there. This one incorporates that EverDrive, but goes beyond that giving you the uh, CD games as well. But then it also gives you that RGB out to where you don't have to worry about modding your system or going about getting something else. So. That's one of the reasons this thing's gonna be a little bit more pricey. So those are some options right there. Now, the next thing you could do is with either the Super SD System 3 or the DB Graphics Booster, is use the Genesis cable from HD Retrovision, the component cable. So if you wanna plug this in straight into a TV that supports component and it works with this, so your TV has to support 240p over component, uh, this is definitely a great option as well. But then the things that you could use to be able to output that through HDMI, you have a couple other options. 
And like I said, the HD retrovision cable can be used with the, the SD system three and the engine block AV DB graphics booster. Um, but you could take that component cable from HD retrovision, plug it straight into a RetroTINK 2X. The RetroTINK 2X is also going to take uh, that mini HDMI, so you'll either need you know mini to standard or an adapter like this. It also has to be powered up, so you do have to have a, a micro USB cable plugged in there to give it power. Plug in your component, your audio cables, and then straight into your HD TV, and you're good to go. This line doubles has smoothing option. Uh, you're going to get very similar results as the Rad 2X. I love the Rad 2X, $50 device. Uh, the RetroTINK 2X, around $100, but you can use this for multiple systems if you have cables for each of your systems. Supports component, S-Video, and composite. So this is something, just depending on your situation, may be a better bet for you uh, than getting the Rad 2X. If you need to get something that's going to work for multiple consoles, yeah, the RetroTINK 2X may be the way to go, um, but I've, I've been really digging these, the simple solution uh, with the Rad 2X. Now, the next thing, besides the RetroTINK, if you want to take it a step further, is going to be the OSSC. I don't have a Frame Meister, so I can't speak on that. I'm only speaking on the options I have available to me, but the OSSC isn't just a, a simple you know, line doubler, whereas the RetroTINK 2X or the Rad 2X, you're just line doubling, two times lines. With this, you can go up to five times lines, do pass-through, you have scan line filters, all sorts of awesome stuff. Quite a bit more complicated of a device than the others, but also at the same time, fairly simple. Most of the time, it's just plug and play. You don't really need to mess with anything um, unless you want to change certain options or it's you're required to. There's a lot to learn with this. Uh, it's something where you may have to learn it. You may not. I have not fully learned this device, but um, you can go up to five times lines if your TV will support it. Some consoles, some TVs, you're not going to be able to go past that. For me, recording wise, I can't record past two times lines, so I can't really showcase this to its fullest, but you will get the best video quality out of this, out of any of these devices. This thing's going for around like 180 bucks or so. Depending on where you get it, you can find uh, different versions. This one was from, um, what was it, uh, Video Game Perfection. And I know I paid around the $200 point for this, but you can find other people who produce them for a lot lower than that. I'll have links in the description if you want to check it out. Another multi-purpose scaler. Uh, that way you can use this for a ton of different systems. So there's that. The video options, the game options, different ways to enjoy your system. Now, the other thing I want to briefly talk about is going to be Street Fighter 2. So I'm pretty sure we played this game on my channel in the past on the PC Engine. Great port, very solid game for the PC Engine. But you, you may be thinking the PC Engine, the standard controller, she's only got two buttons, right? So in this, if I remember correctly, your run button and then your two and one would be your three like punches or kicks. You'd have to hit the select button to swap them, right? From punch or kick. Kind of annoying to play that way, but it is playable, just not the preferred way, right? So that's where the Avenue Pad 6 comes in. So the Avenue Pad 6, uh, these things, just you have to look out for them, man. They're going from like 20 to 40 bucks. Sometimes you can find them cheaper, just going to depend, right? This thing is an awesome controller. I love it. Six buttons. Supports uh, the turbo fire for the uh, one and two button. And then a slow mode, which is just stupid. It's just like it repeatedly presses the, the run button or the start button. So there you go. You have six buttons here to be able to play Street Fighter 2 and a few other fighting games and games that require three or six buttons. Highly recommend getting this controller. Uh, it has an A and B option there um, because you have to have it in the B option to use all six buttons. The A option just for the, the, the one and two. Um, I believe maybe the one, two, and three. But if you're using like the Turbo EverDrive and you have this in the B option, when you're navigating the menus, it'll kind of glitch things out. So you have to keep it in A when you want to play like Street Fighter or something else. If you're loading it through a flash cart device, then when you load the game, you swap it to B and you have access to all six buttons. Highly recommend this. Highly recommend it uh, to get the most out of your PC engine. Now, the last thing that I want to quickly talk about 
is the turbo tap. I don't, I don't recall what this is called turbo something. Uh, it's the turbo tap, I believe in the U S I don't remember what it's called in Japan, the uh, PC engine multi tap maybe, but with the PC engine, you only have one controller port. How's you going to play multi multiplayer games, right? I know there's other options out there, but uh, this is the official one. And for the PC engine gives you five ports to play games up to five players like Bomberman um, or two player games like Street Fighter simply plugs into the front controller port there. Boom. And then you plug in your additional controllers and you're ready to go. These things I just checked, they're going for uh, maybe between 15 to $20 uh, for the PC engine. Definitely recommend uh, grabbing one of these. So there is that. These are the options I have available to me. My preferred option right now is the uh, the Terra Onion SD System 3, simply because it has everything built into it, RGB out. I could, I really love the Rad 2X, so that's what I've been using mostly. Simply plug that in for me, and I am ready to go. Have my SD card in the side there. Uh, the one thing I do want to note is I've been reading, because I am using a SanDisk card, um, and the, there's a later revision of the SD System 3 uh, that fixed some audio noise issues and graphics issues. Uh, so the later versions, and if you buy one now, you'll get the, the revised board. Um, but some people playing like CD based games, they'll get like a buzzing or, uh, you know, kind of some, some audio noise when they're loading CD games. And it turns out that it's the, uh, the SanDisk cards or the one or the cards that are actually causing that when it's reading uh, the information from it. And from what I've seen, people are recommending using a uh, transcend micro SD cards instead. And it pretty much eliminates any of those issues for me. I really have to turn up my volume to hear it. Some games, it's 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 just apparent that I have that noise. Some games, I don't notice it at all. But for me, using the SanDisk card hasn't been an issue for the most part. It's tolerable for me, so not really worth complaining on my end. But like I said, the Transcend card is, is the one that I've been seeing people talk about that works with that. So that's what my preferred setup is. But I do use everything here. Um, just depends on, on what I'm doing. But for my own personal use, I do love that SD System 3 with the Rad 2X plugged straight into an HD TV, ready to go using my Avenue Pad 6. And one thing to note too, um, is if you have both of these options, the uh, SD System 3 and an EverDrive, if you have a Hue card in the front here with this attached, this will just work as a pass-through device for your RGB. You could still load games or even the EverDrive. You could pop in Street Fighter 2 with this attached, so you don't have to really worry about that. If you have that device, it's just kind of a bonus. Gives you that, that RGB out, and you could still use the uh, Hue card slot. So with the if you have a Hue card in there and you power it on, it's going to default to that and not load um, the, the user interface from the SD System 3. So that that's a cool thing. Multi-purpose device if you do have a collection of games. But there you guys go. Uh, any questions, drop them in the comments section. Uh, these are the options I have. This is the information that I know. Just wanted to share as much as I can. Love this system. Really digging it. Let me know what you think. And with that said, I will catch y'all next time. Peace out. Bye-bye and boom. Bye.